Hello, Andy the Maniacal Cinephile here with my thoughts on Wonder Woman, who has finally received her first live-action theatrical movie. Not only that, but the movie is directed by Patty Jenkins. She directed the great 2003 movie Monster about real-life female serial killer Eileen Warnos. Now, I may be mistaken, but I also think she's the first woman to direct a blockbuster superhero movie. It actually broke new ground. What? The DC Extended Universe has been met with mixed reactions so far, so let's see if the fourth entry can be saved by Wonder Woman. <laughs> Diana is an Amazon princess, sculpted in clay and given life by Zeus. It's a good thing I didn't do the sculpting. Diana lives on a secluded island paradise occupied solely by female warriors, where she has been trained to be the best. Themyscira, otherwise known as the Island of Synced Cycles. But her life changes forever after American spy Steve Trevor crashes nearby and tells her of the horrors of World War I. Convinced that it's the work of Ares, Diana leaves her home for the first time to fight in the war to end all wars where she finally discovers her full powers and true purpose. I've got a special purpose! A funny trying on dress montage? How could a woman possibly fight in this? Wonder Woman is another superhero origin movie, but it's refreshing because it doesn't deal with street thugs and shot parents. It's a fish out of water movie similar to Marvel's Thor, but handled much better. Diana leaves her beautiful world for one filled with misery and death. That's how I feel every time I return home. Gail Godot plays our princess warrior, Diana, who is 5,000 years old. Whoa, I have a thing for a much, much older woman. When she was first cast, I didn't think this skinny model could be Wonder Woman. Even after Batman vs. Superman, I was on the fence. However, Gal Gadot has made a believer out of me because she kills it as Wonder Woman. It's true, her body count is higher than Batfleck. Gadot plays it as a pure, young idealist who is compassionate, selfless, and a true hero that the world could use right now. The fight scenes are great and all, but Diana interacting with the outside world and discovering herself were my favorite moments. If she sees something is wrong, she writes it. And the weapons are cool. Although I'm glad they left out the invisible jet. Aha! They'll never see me coming! Chris Pine plays Steve Trevor, an American spy and Diana's love interest. Steve is a cynical realist, so he and Diana clash because she only sees right and wrong without the gray in between. To be fair, she did live in an actual bubble. Overall, the two had some pretty good chemistry together. That leads to laughs... ...and tears. The last time I got emotional over a watch... ...was in Pulp Fiction. I even enjoyed Steve's comical secretary, Etta, and the three sidekicks, Samir, Charlie, and Chief. They're stereotypes, but these likable characters helped bring humanity and depth to this war movie. Danny Huston plays General Eric Ludendorff, an ambitious general of the German army who is working with Dr. Maru, a.k.a. Dr. Poison, a mad scientist who specializes in poisonous gases. These villains are one-dimensional, but the true antagonist is war. No, really, the god of war Ares, the treacherous son of Zeus and half-brother of Diana. He masquerades as one of our characters, but you'll probably be able to figure it out. Ares doesn't care too much for Zeus's creation, and intends to wipe out mankind in an over-the-top finale. It kind of felt like a God of War video game. Is that the best you can do? At the end of the day, it's not so much about punching villains, but about the values, morals, temptations, messages, and themes that the movie explores. All that effort to defeat Ares... Diana is going to be pissed when they announce World War II. 
I wanted a DC movie that wasn't so grim and depressing, and I'm happy to say that Wonder Woman has enough organic heartwarming, inspiring, and funny moments to balance the harsh reality of war. I don't know, Andy. I think it needed more spinning. It's easily the best of the DC Extended Universe. I didn't know much about Wonder Woman before, but now I see her as a completely developed character. Gal Gadot has done a wonderful job and I look forward to seeing more. I especially liked Wonder Woman for its supporting cast and dramatic storytelling. Plenty of callbacks and emotional chords are precisely struck. It's almost as if somebody read this book. So would I recommend seeing Wonder Woman? Yes. Unless you live in Lebanon. This has been Andy, the Maniacal Cinephile. Thanks for watching. And see you next time. Monster Monster.